Hello everybody, welcome back to yet another video. In today's lesson, we are going to be talking about the law of sines. Now, the law of sines, just like the law of cosines, is a, I was going to use the word trick, but it's just a strategy that you can use in order to solve the different components of your triangle, whether it be an acute triangle, an obtuse triangle, or a right triangle. As you know, whenever you first started learning trigonometry, you learned SOHCAHTOA, and SOHCAHTOA is only good for right angle triangles. So we can use the law of cosines and the law of sines to solve the components of any triangle, not just right angled triangles. So let's take a look at this triangle. Let's say I label this side 30 degrees, this angle 45 degrees, this length 20, and this length x. And I ask for you to solve for x. How can you do that? Can, can you do that at all? Well, you notice, hey, well, this isn't a right triangle. So how about the law of cosines? How, and you go to your law of cosines. Your law of cosines, again, is a squared plus b squared minus 2ab times the cosine of theta is equal to c squared. But you notice, hey, that's not going to work because I don't know two of my side links. The law of cosines only works if you have at least two side links. So that's not going to work either. And then you think back, okay, well, what's another way I could solve for the components of this triangle? How else could I solve for x? And then you think, oh yes, I can drop an altitude here and I can make this into two right triangles. Here, let me clean this up. This is still 45 degrees. So we drop an altitude, we have two right triangles. And now, and let's call our altitude, let's call it h for height. And now we can get somewhere. We can solve for h using SOHCAHTOA, as we know that the sine of 30 degrees is equal to h over 20. And so we could solve for h, and then we could solve for x this way. We also know that the sine of 45 degrees is equal to h over x. Therefore, what do we know? Well, we can multiply both sides by x for this bottom equation and have that x is equal to sine of 45 times h. Or, <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm sorry. That's not right. x times sine of 45 equals h, rather. And for this top equation, we can multiply both sides by 20 and have that h is equal to 20 times the sine of 30 degrees. Now we have two equations that are equal to h, so we can set them equal to one another. So let's have x times sine of 45 and set this equal to 20 sine of 30. Again, we can do this because we know that sine of 30 is simply h over 20 Sine of 45 is h over x. We know that from SOHCAHTOA. Sine equals opposite over hypotenuse. Then we solve for h in both of these equations, and then we set their values equal to one another. Now we're looking to solve for our variable x. So lastly, we can just divide both sides by sine of 45 to get that x equals 20 times sine of 30 all over sine of 45. And you can plug this value in and you will have x as your answer. 
Now, I know you guys are thinking, hey, that's all great and all, but I just use Sokotoa. This is a lot of signs video. Tell me what's up. And yes, in solving this, I want you to recognize that the side lengths are proportional to the sine of the opposite angles. Or in other words, I want you to notice that, hey, look, look at this last statement. We have x is equal to 20 times sine of 30 over sine of 45. Let's take this and let's divide by sine of 30. If we divide by sine of 30, what do we get? Well, we get that x over sine of 30 is equal to 20 over sine of 45. And again, what, it, what did I just say? I said that side lengths are proportional to the sine of the opposite angle. Or in other words, x over sine of 30 the opposite angle is equal to 20 over the sine of 45. And this is the law of sines. So the law of sines is here, let's uh, change colors. The law of sines, and let's, let's draw a triangle. You know, let's, let's label it, make it clear so we know exactly what's happening. So here we have some triangle. Let's label it A, B, and C. This opposite angle is B, capital A, capital C. And so the law of sine states that A over the sine of A is equal to B over the sine of B is equal to C over the sine of C. This relationship is the law of sines. And as we just solved up here, whenever we were solving for X, we found out from our answer that X over sine of 30 is equal to 20 over sine of 45. And again, so professionally, this is how the law of sines looks, and again, it means that the side lengths are proportional to the sine of the opposite angles. So let's go ahead and use the law of sine in order to solve some basic problems. So let's solve for A and B using the law of sine. So again, the side length is proportional to the sine of the opposite angle. So in this case, A over sine of 45 degrees is equal to B over sine of 25 degrees. Oh, excuse me. And 12 over sine of 110 degrees. So if we're looking to solve for A or B, here, let's solve for A first. We just can cross multiply. We have A times sine of 110 is equal to 12 times the sine of 45 degrees. And then we can divide by sine of 110 to solve for A. So A equals 12 times sine of 45 over sine of 110. And this is something that you can just plug into your calculator and get a value. And then how could we solve for B? Well, we can solve for B by, oops, Let's undo that. We can solve by B by the exa exact same process. We can simply cross multiply B times sine of 110 is going to be equal to 12 
times sine of 25. And then we can divide by sine of 110 to get that B is equal to 12 times sine of 25 degrees over the sine of 110 degrees. And so we're able to solve for the components of the triangle a lot quicker using the law of sines. Let's check out this one. How large is sine of A when compared to sine of 40 degrees? Okay, this is kind of a critical thinking question. So using the law of sines, we know that 6 over the sine of A is equal to 5 over the sine of 40 degrees. We want to know how large sine of A is compared to sine of 40 degrees. So what can we do? Well, let's solve for sine of A. And so we can solve for sine of A by, uh, let's reciprocate both of these to have sine of A on top. So we have sine of A over 6 is equal to sine of 40 over 5. And then let's multiply both sides by 6 to get that sine of A is equal to 6 fifths times sine of 40. So we can see that sine of A is 6 fifths times larger uh, than sine of 40. So there you go. There's a quick introduction into the law of sines. If you found this video helpful, let me know down in the comments below, and I'll see you in the next video.